Hi, Luna. So how this works is I'll look at your portfolio in general. And then after that, I'll be looking at your pieces individually and then give you some points about what I think is working and what isn't working and how you can fix what isn't working. Right off the bat, what I see in your portfolio is the huge amount of work. I think it's incredible because what's really hard for a lot of people to do is start drawing. What you have for yourself right now is a running head start. You have so much work. And not only do you have that much work, You also experiment in so many mediums. For instance, I see a lot of charcoal, ink, pencil, uh, acrylic, and maybe oil painting, oil pastels, digital media, and even 3D sculptural work. Now, that's all excellent to have in your art portfolio because people really want to see the range you're willing to try. Some things I see that you could improve is maybe pushing things a little bit more towards finish. Right now, I think about 50 to 60% of your portfolio is just behind the scenes work and sketches and things that are clearly just studies and not finished versions of things. Another thing I think that is impeding people from seeing your finished work, because I know you have it, it's just hard to see. It's because you have too many things going on. Every image file has more than one image in it. In fact, they're just like all series of images. And I think that's actually quite distracting because it's really not doing your finished work any favors when you mix it with other unfinished work. So you really have to learn how to cut back. I think you could push color a little bit more. I know you're trying it, especially here in the top left, we see that painting. Push it a little bit more, maybe also in your sketches. When you sketch, maybe just limit yourself to two colors, for instance, blue and orange when you're drawing a portrait. And then you'll see how those colors can work in order to show light and shadow and ways the colors could be used to make the portrait more interesting. I feel like those colors aren't being experimental enough. Like every blue I see is just blue, pink is pink. You could really benefit from exploring a little more with color. I wanna say that your use of the medium is so masterful. If I go in and zoom in, I know that fish will be a different texture from the newspaper it is wrapped in. The textures that you've drawn are clearly very different. I really want to know what that fish is lying on. Like maybe it's a cutting board. Maybe we can see some wood grain. Now I want to talk about the top left piece in terms of light. It's so beautiful. I just love the way it's streaming in and backlighting those items and how it's reflecting on the tile floors. But in this piece, it's only focused on that one spot where the role of that Hamilton book, that book, is in the shoe. That dark spot is literally all my eye is drawn to in this piece. And that's such a shame because this is such an interesting still life. Like you have bottles, drawings, this paint palette, but all I can look at is that one spot of black. So I would suggest spreading out those darks. But one more thing I want to add about your charcoal technique is that it's really good in discerning what to highlight and what not to highlight especially when it comes to text. So in the newspaper, I can read Daily News, I read New York, I read Manhattan. And by the way, I think Manhattan's misspelled. I think there are two T's in Manhattan. When it comes to the articles, I can't read those at all. And that's excellent. I think that's really good because if I were able to read them, that'd be so distracting to the subject matter, the fish in the newspaper. This is really different from your first piece. Uh, This shows a lot of gestural movement, anatomy, nude figure drawing. This is really important to show in your art portfolio because people really want to see that you are figure drawing. So this is excellent. Keep this. This is the only image that isn't a figure drawing. And I would suggest either cutting it out or replacing it with another nude figure drawing. These are really good drawings. But for some reason, you've split them up in a way that I don't understand. For instance, there are three drawings here with a stark white background that clearly belong together. I just don't think they're arranged in a way that is comprehensible. So three images with a white background, they could just be a piece by themselves. You can just cut out the other figures. I think these work really well as a series. I think you should keep this in your portfolio. I really like how specific the people are, which shows how well you're able to portray, see and portray subject matter in your drawings. And your charcoal work is excellent. Like I see you're using the side of the charcoal, the tip of the charcoal, you're smudging a bit, and you're also going in with your eraser 
and uh, drawing in the light with the eraser, as well as details in, such as the wrinkles in this man's face, I can feel the weight of that body. The weakest drawing here is the bottom right, because it isn't at the same level as the top left body drawing. If I were you, I think I would just take that out completely because it just is not at the same level as the other three drawings. This is really good to see. I think this is different in your previous studies in that those were clearly in like an art environment and you were focused on drawing the figure. These are more just observational sketches of everyday life. So I would definitely keep the spread. The thing that bothers me the most is this dark black bar to the left. This was clearly where the sketchbook, when you scanned it, that part was the one that bent towards the binding, and so the scanner couldn't pick it up. Prop that out, or if you have the skills, edit that out, because that's really drawing my eye towards it, and I just see that as a flaw of presentation. Now, there are other parts where the sketchbook binding clearly shows, like the bottom left and the bottom right, that spiral binding, but those don't bother me as much Definitely keep this in your portfolio because people really like to see sketchbook daily life drawings. The left two are definitely really good exercises, but they aren't on the same level as your charcoal portrait. I definitely think your charcoal portrait should be a standalone thing. The ink portrait and the oil pastel portrait just like don't hold a candle to the charcoal ones. Just cut them out. I think this is really good that you're experimenting with typography. Chinese calligraphy is its own art, and it'd be really exciting to see you push that and show different ways that type can work with an image. However, I don't think this series is doing your art portfolio much good because it's very chaotic and messy. I don't feel the need to be able to read this because I feel like it take a lot of effort on my part. I just don't feel like doing it. The way type and image function is together, they shouldn't be fighting each other. And in this case, I feel like they're fighting each other. Moments that work for me, though, is the top right with the handshake and then the words continue below it. I think that's a good way where image and text function together. Another place is the bottom right, the black and the two figures. It's just a place for my eyes to rest, which is why I'm so attracted to those. Other places, they fight too much. Like the top left with the dual commandments and the two hands grasping each other. They're just overlaid and it's hard to tell what one is apart from the other. Also be aware of the composition. So I would take some time beforehand to thumbnail things to see if they work together, work as a series together. This series, I think it definitely needed a little bit more work beforehand to plan out compositions so that they don't fight each other. This seems to be the first purposeful sequential storytelling you're giving us in your portfolio, and that's exciting to see. Your pencil and white color pencil technique is stunning. Like, I love the rendition of the watch, the pile of papers. I think something you can improve on, however, is the composition of these things in the in the image they seem a little bit haphazardly just pasted onto a square pink document people read comics usually in america from left to right top to bottom i would like to see that clearly shown for instance one way you could show it is that scene with the watch on the left have that be in the same rectangular shape as the rest of your pages and I would say the same for your bottom right two images I would also have those be the same shape as your as the rest of the pages right now presentation really matters and I'm not really seeing a lot of detail in presentation make it a little bit more neat and reconsider the pink background like you could just use white like what you've been using before it worked just fine your next piece is an acrylic painting I think the brushwork is exciting I think the colors are also working quite well. The surprise like blots of color of yellow and red. The color work here is really good. This piece feels unfinished. The brushwork throughout the whole piece is sort of looking similar. And it's hard for me to distinguish foreground, middle ground, and background because of how similar all the color saturation is. Someone that's really good about colors is Edgar Degas. He really balances muted and saturated colors together. And I would definitely look at that when making color works in the future. 
I just feel like you could benefit from atmospheric perspective. So really use more muted colors in the back and also make the back a little bit more blurry or fuzzy or less clear so that attention can be drawn to the front. In this image, we see like nine sculptures and that's a lot and that's really good. I would, however, recommend to document these sculptures better because backgrounds really aren't considered. They're not helping your sculptures that much. And additionally, it's quite hard to understand what some of these sculptures are. On the top row, in the middle, we see this red blob sculpture, and I have no idea what that is. Our prof has a tutorial about how to photograph and document 3D work, and I would really recommend watching that because your sculptures are very good. Your documentation isn't doing them justice. I'm really excited about these because these show a really mature sense of color. And I love the way you're mixing yellows and reds and blues into the faces in places we don't expect to see them. I would recommend you to try different ways of using oil pastel. For instance, you can mix baby oil and be able to smear the oil pastel around, sort of like painting. And that would definitely give your pieces more energy and maybe a more finished look. Perhaps you can push some of this oil pastel work to more finished stages. So what you could do is actually draw from life or as a study outside, and then later take it back home and try to finish it with whatever materials you have on hand. So more oil pastels, more photographs, more references, and more time. The bottom left, I love that creature. I don't know what it is. Maybe like a, a hippogriff? <laughs> and I like how you're drawing these sort of in your own cartoonish style. Now that being said, I do not think that these are good to include in your portfolio. I don't think these are up to the level as the other studies you've shown. Another thing is that they're also copies of masters, and that's not a good idea to include in your portfolio because people want to see your original work. I wouldn't include this series. I would cut this out. I'm really excited about these because they really show the character of individual people. I would definitely keep doing these. And additionally, maybe check out the Art Prof tutorial we have about character design. I happen to be in it, so check it out. I would push you to have more creative things that you've done. So things that were born from you. For instance, you can go out and sketch and observe and study all you can. But then when you come back, what are you going to do with that information? You can try to make your own characters for one. Uh, and these are excellent fodder for that. You can take these, come back home, and make your own full-fledged character design. And then put that design into your own story. This seems to be a movie that you really enjoy. And it also seems to be a collage. I would definitely experiment a little more with what you can do with collage. So ripping the paper or cutting out silhouettes of people and pasting them on other images, or mixing up more mediums. You should not put this in your art portfolio, because although fan art is a good way to study and to also be inspired by other people's works, it's not a good idea to put it into your art portfolio when it's supposed to be most of your original work. This might be an original composition or an original way of drawing these characters from this movie, but the fact of the matter is, it's not your movie and it's not your characters. So don't include this in your art portfolio. Next, you have these poster designs, and it seems also to be fan art. Don't include it in your art portfolio. A lot of these colors you have right now are very obvious, like yellow is yellow, pink is pink, blue is blue. I would also go back to your original oil pastel studies of faces and see how you're using color there and in turn put it into this color medium. I don't understand why these pieces are in one image. Like, why are they a series? They seem to be about completely different things. Like, I see different languages going on. I see Chinese and English and, and French. I see different subject matter going on. It seems like the only thing that's connecting all of these is that they're all in color, and maybe they're all in digital format. I feel like some of these could be standalone images. Like, I'm really excited about the bottom right image with the figures and then the light blue text. It's so graphic. I kind of want to see it a lot bigger and by itself. I'm not really sure who these characters are. I hope that they're your own characters. Maybe you made them up. But as a series, this is really exciting. I love the 
icons that you've created. But I think it's kind of ruined by the presentation of the three bottom images because they clearly don't belong. I think you can cut those three out. But I'm quite excited by the middle purple one, the panic image. I think that could be its own standalone thing. You are good at graphic design work or stuff that's very graphic, period. And so I think this panic purple image would work very well in that sense. So it can kind of show that, yes, you can do realistic studies and charcoal of people, of of figures, but you can also do this very graphic work, which is super eye-catching and appropriate for poster work. More fan art. Again, don't include this in your art portfolio, but it's really good to see that you're able to use these, um, these mediums. Micron pen and watercolor I love the color on the bottom. I love the way the red is against the blue and the yellow. I saw that the guy had a tear coming out of his eye, which was really funny. Funny to see that there's just so much detail in here. I think the top image with a micron pen is not finished. I'm not a fan of the ghostly white outline around the girl and the bear. With the images surrounding these two figures... It just doesn't feel as finished, especially with all the white of the paper I can see. So if you're going to do more micron pen, that's something to think about. And it's sort of heartbreaking because micron pen takes so long. But you have to be able to fill up the page and not leave so much white. I'm super excited to see this because I just think the hand and the bird and the, the wrist, the forearm, are just rendered so well. I love your acrylic um, technique for this. The way you're handling each of the figures is just so excellent. Like some people really overdo it. Some people just paint every individual finger. But here you've really painted it so that it's a little bit more vague. The, The motion is still really understood. I also want to point out the veiny forearm. That's an excellent technique again because it just shows how the hand is just really clenching that bird. I do want to talk about the composition and how it's really not selling me. It's so easy to just put a thing in the middle and just call it a composition. But truth of the matter is, it would really benefit you if you could go in before the final image and start to thumbnail possible compositions. You could have cropped out part of the background. You could have zoomed up on the hand. You could have put it maybe not in the center, maybe towards the left or the right. It's just that this composition is a little bit boring. And next time, try to think more ahead about these things. Another thing is that the background is so blank compared to the very beautiful hand. Honestly, would not be missed if it were cropped out completely. And again, this might also play into why some of your pieces don't feel like they're pushed to finish. You really have to consider composition as an important factor of your images and then be able to have all aspects of your image feel finished. So in this case, your background does not feel as finished. One more thing I would like to add is that if you ever have trouble curating your works or wondering if a piece has been pushed enough to finish, you can definitely still submit to the live critiques that happen at ArtProf. They're completely free and we would really appreciate your submissions. I think you have so much work, Luna, that it really is incredible to see. It's clear that you've worked so hard on these. But now your job is to cut out things that aren't supposed to be in your portfolio and also push other pieces to finish. But otherwise, this is really excellent to see. And I hope that I see more developed series from you as well because you have this penchant for series and you draw so much and so well that I can't wait to see what you do next. 